everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, my name is Kim, I hope you're all doing well. Today I am starting a new series on my channel that I am super excited to start, and it's going to be called Makeup Artist Spotlight, either Sunday or Monday, depending on when this gets uploaded. But it's where I'm going to be taking a look from a celebrity makeup artist that I really enjoy, or if you leave a recommendation for me to check out that you enjoy and I try to take their look and recreate it on my face using products I already own and seeing how successful I am at that. Um, so today the first person that we're going to be shining the spotlight on is Jo Baker. She has so many amazing clients that she's done incredible work with and today's look will actually be her uh, kind of pastel rainbowy look on Lucy Boynton. You know, you know her from uh, Bohemian Rhapsody or her new show The Politician, but I fell in love with this look. This is from last summer and it just looks so fresh, so pretty but not overdone and I just really wanted to try it out. So we're gonna get right into it. So I've just gone ahead and clipped up my hair and I've also already primed my skin and I've started kind of concealing some breakouts that I've been having but we're going to start off with the foundation then move our way into the eyes and then do the rest of the base. It's going to be a little bit of a weird thing, uh, order of products but we're going to work with it. So looking at the actual look. Uh, it seems like they've kept the skin very natural looking. It's not too dewy. It's not too matte It's just it looks like skin So I wanted to use something that in my opinion looks like skin Which would be the hourglass vanish stick foundation. I love this product This is one of my holy grail foundations first of all It's super convenient because it's in a stick but I feel like you can literally get any amount of coverage you want from this. You can build it up super full and it still looks light. Or you can do just a few dots and it's just sheer all over. Love this so much. And it's not too dewy and not too matte. So we're going to go in with that. I'm just going to start small. Blend it out and see how we like the coverage. Just anywhere that I have redness, I'm going to try and help that out a little. I'm using an Alamar Cosmetics, they call this the bronzer brush, but if you look at it, it just looks like a foundation brush, so that's what I've been using it for. I think that's pretty good coverage wise. It's probably a bit more full coverage than what she went with. I can only assume that they use like a liquid type of foundation that was very sheer. However, I don't have one that matches me right now, shockingly enough. I have a tan and I haven't had a tan since I was probably like 10. I'm very pale and I never tan so I have no clue what's going on this year. But this is going to be the base. We're going to go in and we're going to conceal a little bit more of like spots. Although they're looking okay right now. But that'll be after we go into the eyes. And we're going to start that right now. So in trying to research what Joe Baker used on Lucy Boynton for this, she has some of her stories saved up on her Instagram bio type highlight reel. And um, this look was saved on there. She doesn't go into detail into what exact products she used, but she did mention that she used cream shadows and then laid down powder shadows on top of the same sort of color family to create that look. And while I don't have cream eyeshadows of every color under the sun, I do have the Danessa Myricks um, waterproof cream palettes to use. So I'm going to actually start by using the white and I'm gonna put that all over my eyes and then I'm gonna take each of the colors and pat those on top also just to kind of 
almost blending on my eyes. This doesn't have to be too exact. We just want to get that kind of like milky pastel base for the shadows to go on top of. I'm just going to take a flat brush from ColourPop, the E4, and I'm going to start just lightly patting on the white cream from the Janessa Myricks palette. I believe this one is the primaries. Just gonna take my fingers and pat along the edges just to make it look a little bit less rigid, the shape. If you're also curious about these palettes, I did do a um, swatch video and I gave a little bit more information on them um, already on my channel. I'll link that in a card somewhere for you to go and watch if you're interested. I reviewed three of the palettes and I'm using two of them today. They're definitely handy to have, especially if you're a makeup artist to keep in your kit. Okay, so I have the white base on. Now looking at the look, they have yellow on the inner corner, kind of like a peach middle of the top, like the eyelid. Um, then it goes into the blue, which kind of goes into a light green, more yellow, a deeper pink, and then back to the yellow on the lash line. Words, how do they work again? So I'm going to start with the um, yellow. And to achieve that kind of peach color, because I don't have an actual genuine peach in either of these palettes, I'm going to be bringing the yellow all the way up to the middle point of my eye and then I will be patting some pink on top to create that peachy orange kind of a look. So just until about there because that's where the blue is going to go. And these will crease. Um, I discussed that in the video. These crease until you set a powder on top. Just keep that in mind. I'm just going to tap over again. I think I'm probably going to do that with every color. It's just going to make it kind of blur a little bit more than just having it be on the white. Long nails, this is so difficult. <laughs> but we're making it work. So I'm going to go in with this very light pink. in the Vivids palette right here. That's what I'm gonna put on top of the yellow just in the kind of center area to create sort of the corally peachy color that they have there. I might add a little bit more white to it as well. So the peachy shade that we've got going on, I think that looks pretty good. Again, the colors that you lay down don't need to be identical to the powder that you set. They just need to be very similar. Of course, having them be identical would be an extreme asset. I don't know who would have identical shades in cream and powder though. I think that'd be a pretty tricky thing to find. But. Moving on, we're going to go into the blue section, which is almost at the very edge. It will kind of end up blending into the green. I'm going to use the Zoeva 234 Luxe Smoky Shader. I just, I'm using anything that's kind of flat to lay these creams down. And while I use the same brush for the white, yellow, and pink, I'm not going to be using the same one for the blue. I think that would just be a bit would create a little bit of a weird shade so we're gonna try and avoid that and just pressing it down this one is super vibrant probably gonna add a little bit more white on top yeah so we're gonna add more white on top. It's always interesting trying to figure out how much of what you need. 
this is where you would probably benefit in just mixing them on a palette. Live and learn. I'm gonna take the other side of this brush I think that works out pretty well. Okay, so that's the blue portion done. Now on to the green. So much layering going on. And we're gonna dip back into the Vivid's palette and just using that green shade. I'm going to take the babyest amount. This is like extremely neon green. It's the only kind of green cream color I have though. Again, using what I own. And finding eyeshadows for this look was a challenge because you would think, oh, they're probably going to all be in one palette. Mm -mm. I have five palettes that I'm using for this, of course. Love making it a little bit more difficult for myself. I really want to get back into buying single shadows and just kind of curating my own palettes because I really want to get a actual pastel palette. And I mean like an actual pastel palette. So many times you'll see a pastel palette and the colors just look dull. Like they don't have the vibrancy in them while saying that, I mean yeah, pastels are not super vibrant because they're pale. But it's almost like instead of using just a white base, they also like put in like a, I don't know, they don't look vibrant. They just look dulled down. The milky base isn't there, basically. So, I'm going to take this Peach Essentials brush. It's a flat eye brush. And we're going to start off by doing the yellow inner corners. And for that, I'm going to be taking the Morphe Times Matte palette. And I'm using the shade Like Butter. So... Just tapping that on for right now, it's almost like we're going to build it up and then we're going to blend it together because you don't want these shadows to exactly blend completely into one another. You want it to look like a smooth transition, but you still want those colors to be those colors having their own territory on your eyes. Now, Lucy Boynton has a different eye shape than me, obviously, um, and when Joe Baker put this yellow on, you can see it almost looks like she took it kind of a bit farther out from the inner corner. That just doesn't flatter me because my nose is quite large. For the peachy coral shade, I'm actually going to go into the Aether Beauty Joshua Tree Palette in this shade Pixie Rock and it looks really really like light beige in the pan up against this yellow backdrop but it's actually like quite peachy and on my eyes it looks even darker for some reason I'm not quite sure why but I'm just gonna, I color switched this brush and I'm gonna use the same one and pat that shadow on. For the blue shade, I'm going back into the Morphe and Maddie Zeigler palette. I'm gonna use the shade 5 and just pat that on like I did with the last two. So when I was doing, I kind of did like a test for this eye before I started filming and I used the shade Mint in this palette. And I don't know if you'll agree with me, but this is not mint. <laughs> this is super vibrant, vivid green. It's not very minty or pastel at all. 
So I'm about to show you a super janky palette. Uh, this is the Huda Beauty Emerald Essentials palette. Yep. And I tried to depot it. I cannot get these things out. So it currently lives now in a Ziploc bag looking super mangled, but that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use this super light, actually minty shade from that palette, and I'm going to pat that on, and then, and then we'll start blending everything out. So I'm going to take more of like a rounded, tapered brush from my Peach Essentials brush kit and I'm going to take it clean and just kind of work the edges a little bit. We might need to add a little bit of uh, pigment to it still, but we'll see how this goes. I think I'll need to add a tiny bit more of that Aether Beauty shade right in the middle there. But other than that, I think it's looking pretty good. Also, I'm starting to say what brushes I'm using just because I got a comment on one of my other videos asking what brush I had used and I totally forgot to list it, so this way I can't forget. Smart. So jumping back into this, I'm actually going to just take my finger, kind of stamp it into that color and just go over where the line for that color meeting the blue because I feel like the blue just overtakes the coral color a lot easier than the coral kind of working its way through. Just to make it look like there's no harsh lines. Okay, so now that the top is done. Uh, I'm gonna move on to kind of concealing, doing some of the blush, the bronzer, and everything like that. For concealer, it just looks so natural under her eyes. It almost still looks like you can kind of see the natural, like, darkness under her eyes still. It's not like she used a super brightening full coverage concealer on her. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my Becca under eye corrector first and then I'm going to go in with a light coverage concealer. And I'm just going to take the smallest amount of the under eye corrector and just put it right where my under eyes get really dark. And to conceal, I'm going to take my Glossier Stretch Concealer, I think, would be a good option. I'm going to take that and my Beauty Sponge. And just pat that underneath the eyes. So this way it still looks like, you know, I have under eye circles. But not as bad as I actually do. I think that's as good as we're gonna go for and I don't want to do too much because I still want this to look not too heavy. You know, imperfections are normal so let's just let them have their moment. I'm going to just really quickly um, set my under eyes with the Well People Bio Brightener Loose Powder. I love this stuff, it's so good. It like sets your makeup without making your skin look like it's super dry. I'm going to take this brush from Peach Essentials again and just pat that in. I'm going to make sure that there's no creases before I set underneath my eye real quick. Okay, now that my under eyes are set, just to prevent any further creasing, I'm going to actually start with the blush. Yes. And it, on her, on this look, it looks like a very light, almost barely there, kind of a pink blush, pink fleshy kind of a tone. And it, it's not like a warm tone pink from what I can tell. It looks pretty neutral to cool. So I'm going to use the Cloud Paint in Puff. I feel like this would be a good enough color match for that. 
I'm going to take the other side of my sponge and just dot that on. I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit to my nose. She has such like a small, cute nose and it looks like there might be a little bit of blush or bronzer just on the tip of that nose and also freckles are shining through so I might add some freck at the very end of this. We'll see. I have freckles but they're so light. Even when I wear a skin tint, they're almost non-existent. But we can enhance them today. So, for contour, because again, she looks very, very natural, I'm actually going to go in with the Salt New York palette that I made. So, if you don't know what Salt New York is, she makes these incredible palettes. They're magnetized. They stay shut even when the zipper is not closed. The zipper is open right now. Um, and then they have this little mirror in them, and you can choose what kind of cream tints you want. She makes so many different kinds, different blushes, bronzers, a contour, a highlighter, and they're just so well done and very inclusive in shades. I think that they are extremely easy to work with and I will never be without them. They will go with me everywhere. I'm actually going to take just like a slanted brush and a dip right into the pan of the contour, this one. I'm just going to put that a little bit higher than where my cheekbone indent is, the hollow of my cheek, yeah, hollow. I don't know, that sounds right. <laughs> but I'm gonna put it a little bit higher up and blend it out. And it just blends into almost nothing. Not nothing, because then it wouldn't be worth putting it on, but it looks very natural. So natural. I love this so much. It's like the perfect contour shade for me. I've looked at so many different contour shades, and they almost all still lean warm, because I am so, so pale. It's almost like I need something that's like just straight up gray. I'm just going to really lightly contour my jaw and my cheekbones. So I'm going to powder the rest of my face. We'll do our eyebrows and finish the eyes. So I used the Well People Bio Brightener under my eyes, but for the rest of my face, I'm going to use the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder just to kind of keep some luminosity while also mattifying it a little bit. Like I said, we want to keep it all looking almost satin. And this powder is so good, I'm shocked. Although e.l.f. has been really killing it lately. Okay, now that the face is set and done, we are going to do the final kind of face product, which will be bronzing. Her bronze, again, looks very natural. I'm going to take the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer, and I have it in the shade Fair One, um, which is super light. I know a lot of people were not happy with how light this was, but it is perfect for me, because I am so pale. Not as pale right now, but it still works. I'm just going to take, again, I think this is like a bronzing and blush brush from the Peach Essentials kit. And just sweep that over the perimeter of my face. I'll put a little bit of it on my nose as well. It's just gonna warm things up a little tiny bit. Nothing crazy. We're going to go ahead and do the brows. I'm going to take my Alate Cosmetics Brow Balm and I have mine in the shade Smoke. They recommend that you use like um, like a brow brush to create like hair-like strokes. I really like using sort of a spoolie, rubbing that in, and then just brushing my brows through. 
it adds that kind of color, but it almost gives it sort of like you filled it with powder very naturally type of a look. You don't want your brows to look overdone with this. And I'm just going to take some of the clear brow gel. Mine's from Anastasia Beverly Hills. and brush your brow hairs up. Now that the brows are done, the bronzer is done, everything else is done, I'm gonna finish the eye look, the lash line, lower, and we're gonna basically do just powder. Um, I'm not gonna go in with creams on the lower lash line, frankly because for me, I just have lots of little tiny creases underneath my eyes. That's just because of my eye shape. Um, and working with creams in that area is just a bit tricky for me. If you have like perfectly smooth under eyes, I think it would be easier for you to use creams than go over with a powder. But not today, not me. Basically gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on top with kind of working the color in and buffing them out. So I'm gonna do this and kind of fast forward it for you so you, I don't have to bore you over again. Okay, eyeshadow is done, and we're going to do the lashes. So I was really curious to see um, how Joe Baker kind of came up with how she did Lucy Boynton's eyelashes. They look super intense, dramatic. I don't want to say clumpy. I don't know another word for it, but it certainly looks a little bit more editorial rather than your typical light mascara, like. Some of them definitely look a little bit more like PC. Um, she's definitely not wearing a strip lash, I can tell you that. Um, I'm not quite sure if she used individuals on her. Her lashes are super long and in all of the looks that she does with Lucy Boynton, her eyelashes kind of look this way. I almost want to say that she must just have eyelash extensions or is just incredibly blessed with extremely long eyelashes. So I'm going to go ahead and just really, really coat my lashes with a lot of mascara right after I curl them. And I actually recently got a mascara that is going to be perfect for this. Urban Decay Lash Freak Mascara. I just got this. I loved it the first time I wore it. It was really nice. Um, it gave length, but a lot of volume, and I feel like the more that I'm using it, the weirder this wand gets. If you can see, it's like picking up a lot of product on the back of the brush, and just, it's getting very, very messy. I'm thinking maybe the stopper isn't designed for this type of brush. Basically, there's only bristles on one side, the other doesn't, so that's probably what's going on but when I use it, so much product gets built up on the lashes that it's incredibly hard to work with. If you're just going to your office job, it looks a little bit funny. I feel like for this look though, it'll probably work out hopefully very well and not completely ruin it, but we'll see. We're gonna leave it at that at fear of it getting extremely clumpy because it has happened to me before. For the final touch, which is lips, her lips look like more of a nudie, almost pinky nudie kind of your lips but better shade. 
and they don't look too glossy but they also don't look matte or flat like they have a bit more sheen than obviously my lips do right now so I'm going to go ahead and take this Evio lip liner and I have it in the shade Val and I'm just gonna take that and kind of squiggle that around everywhere And then I'm going to take the M Cosmetics Lip Gloss in Mochi Mochi. This is a super milky, very, very pale nude shade. So this is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me create this. I know that it was kind of all over the place. This is the first um, time that I'm filming something in this kind of a format. Uh, but I really enjoy it. I think it looks super, super pretty. I definitely think that I probably went a little bit heavier on the foundation side just because I don't have like a skin tint that really matches me right now. Um, and I also have some spots that I really wanted to try to hide because I haven't had to deal with acne in so long. <laughs> but overall, I think that I'm really, really impressed with this. There are certainly some things that I still would tweak with, change a little bit, but I really, really like this. It's so, like the color on the eyes is so soft, but definitely so like, once you see it, you see it, and it just looks interesting. And it doesn't look as like, done up or structured or as like glam as like maybe like a full coverage foundation with extremely chiseled cheeks like you know what I mean like keeping it on that natural side but having that pop of color just makes it look very very unique I really like it I really had a good time doing this so I definitely have more looks planned that I want to do and hopefully a little bit more organized in the process. But if you have any makeup artists that you love, let me know down below in the comments. And if you have a very specific look that they did, try to explain that to me as well. And I will try and do that in the future. And I hope you all have a good day or evening or morning, wherever you are in the world watching right now. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and please remember to subscribe. I would love to have you here. It means the world to me. And until next time, stay well.